and I ain't endorsing nothing for doing what's right and getting out the vote. But when we put the right folks in office, you can't just go home and sit down. You got to make them do the right thing. And politics can't free us. Oppressed people never been freed under politics. You got to free politics because you got to make them do it. So thank you so much. I always go with Frank and Ducky, who said, Oh, you ready? I see you getting ready for it. Oh, yeah. Power concedes yeah. nothing to nothing without a demand. Yeah. It never has, yeah. and it never yeah. will. Repeat after me. Fire it up. Fire it up. Fire it up. Fire it up. Go to the bowl. God bless you. Yeah. Hello, everyone, and welcome to SCLC TV today. You sound like a preacher there, Dr. Steele. Our president and CEO looked like you had you were in a pulpit there. A little spiritual encounter. <laughs> <laughs> but Dr. Steele, we talk about the preaching you did kind of jokingly, but a preacher won a Senate seat. Thanks much to you and other civil rights types who knocked on doors. What does that say to you? What does that mean to you to have a man of, from Dr. Steele, Dr. King's church, and now in the Senate? Well, first of all, uh, thank you, Maynard. Uh, uh, Reverend Walnock, as you know, is just two blocks from our office. And the fact that uh, he's now a U.S. Senator-elect and also pastor of Ebenezer Baptist Church, well, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. co-pastored with his father, it's, it's only right to understand and to give credit to the black church. Uh, his demeanor, his charisma, his articulation, and his courageousness actually uh, delivered the message that we all need at this particular time. <clears throat> and the mere fact that we're just two blocks from uh, Ebenezer Baptist Church is providential. It's, it's, it's all in the working of the, the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost in terms of Christianity and what we believe in. And Today, we've gone all over, working with none other, I have to give credit to my good friend, none other than attorney, Barbara Arntwine. Uh, Barbara, along with her <coughs> attorney, Dara Jones, my Lord, the spirit was that, well, you know, scripture speak of wherever two or three gather in my name, talking about the Lord, in his name, he will be in the midst. Attorney Barbara Arnwine did a magnificent, a Herculean job. And I want to personally thank her. We went all over the state of Georgia. Even before this election, we were getting folks ready. We were still all over during the uh, Ahmaud Arkberry situation. We was all over South Georgia. Did a tour in one day in six counties speaking all over the place, singing all over the place, having none other than Reverend Malone down there representing us in uh, <clears throat> South Georgia with SCLC. Man, it's just a great time and a great opportunity for us to celebrate. Let's hear what Reverend Warnock had to say uh, in accepting his, uh, this, his victory, paper thin though it was. <laughs> but the other day, because this is America. The 82-year-old hands that used to pick somebody else's cotton went to the polls and picked her youngest son to be a United States senator. Remember the out of all so of Georgia. I come before you tonight as a man who knows that the improbable journey that led me to this place in this historic moment in America could only happen here. We were told that we couldn't win this election. But tonight, we prove that with hope, hard work, and the people by our side, anything is possible. May my story be an inspiration to some young person who is trying to grasp and grab hold of the American dream. And so Georgia, I am honored by the faith that you have shown in me. And I promise you this tonight, I am going to the Senate to work for all of Georgia. 
not to steal all of Georgia, but this sends signals across all of America, does it not? Uh, uh, particularly to those who worked in the fields to get them elected. Absolutely. Um, people who would never be given credit, and that's, that's, that's just the way life is, because they didn't do it to be a person or to be on the six o'clock news or individuals who wanted the accolades. But there were so many people could interact with this movement. And when the Lord is in the middle of it, 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 it sets you on fire. And to be around uh, Ahmaud Arbery aunts and to be all over, not only just Atlanta, but the state of Georgia. And to hear people give testimonial type of uh, conveyance of the fact that I've never voted before, but I'm going to vote yeah. this time. I mean, come on, man. If the spirit doesn't touch you on that, I'll take my coat off right now and shout, Mr. Mr. E. That was, and then I got a call this morning from Miss Diane uh, Aubrey and expressing and giving thanks to the opportunity to meet my wife because my wife also brought them into her office. Man, chills goes all over your body. By the mere fact, you know that we can make a difference and it doesn't take a lot just to show love to folks and they'll listen to you. Reverend Steele, I'm Dr. Reverend Steele. So I'm gonna got you calling you a reverend now. You've been preaching so much. But but Dr. Steele, Reverend Hosea Williams, Reverend uh, uh, uh past president uh, and a past president, Dr. Uh, oh gosh. Uh, but there were preachers who led voting rights movements. Uh the, the former president of SCLC, now the uh now and he's since deceased this year. But again, there's been much movement with regard to getting out to vote. Is it not? This has been historic for SCLC. Right, right, absolutely. You're speaking of Dr. Joseph Eckers Laurie, uh, in, in terms of uh, my mentor. And, uh, you know, Felicia was there, uh, who worked with Rita Samuels, and by her being there and giving accolades to the work of SCLC. And um, SCLC, not only in yesteryears, but today, playing a vital role. And, and, and we understand there are going to be other organizations. But in order to build a house, you got to have a foundation. Uh, you'll never get to the roof. It will collapse before you complete it. So my point is, don't, don't belittle the historicity of where we come from and where we are today in terms of uh, many of our uh, contributions and successes that we've made in life. How important, how significant do you feel this victory by Warnock and possibly Ossoff? What does it say about America and the political fortunes and future of uh, President Biden? Well, first of all, don't forget my word collaboration. Yeah. It's all about collaboration. And I also quote Victor Hugo. Uh, and, and, and I'd have to give credit to the spirit of this movement in the last uh, four, five, six weeks, when Victor Hugo said there's more misery among poor people than there is humanity among the rich. Let me say that again. There's more misery among poor people than there is humanity among the rich. And what he was saying was that people have a tendency to get intoxicated with success. And when you bring in the Holy Spirit in terms of a movement that many and many of people has played, and you bring the Holy, Holy Spirit in, it has no respect for the richness of opposition. Can I say that any better? With all of the money, okay, with all of the money that was given and trying to degrade and denigrate and bring about the attack of a Baptist preacher in the name of Reverend Raphael Warnock. God does not like ugly. And at the end, the victory will always sustain itself. That's what you're dealing with, providential. Well, finally, we began this show saying you gotta make them do it. Will you be in Washington more regularly? Will you be at the inauguration? Will you be demanding President Biden and his team do something for the least of these? 
I'm, I'm, I'm like uh, my father used to say when we're sitting around our business in Tulsa, Alabama. He said, watch yourself, son, because I'm just like the Lord. You don't know where I'm going to show up at. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I never forget that. You never know where I'm going to show up at, but I can guarantee you I'm going to show up in Washington, D.C. And as you know, uh, Mr. E, that I've been doing uh, workshops and seminars in Washington, D.C. for the last three or four years. And I've been welcomed there by many of the participants of the staff of the U.S. Senate and the staff of the U.S. House of Representatives. So this is nothing different for us or foreign. We will participate. Is this a new day, you think, for Washington, D.C., political establishment, political leadership, or much the same, just a different party label? I think because of the failures that we have had for many of years in looking to the government and looking to certain individuals to deliver us rather than the power that's greater than me that woke me up this morning. We don't look to no individual. We don't look to no political party. We look to the spirit, consciousness of doing right. You know, when cowardness was asked the question, what are you going to do? First thing coward want to know, is it safe? You know, but then you, 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 you go and you ask vanity. Vanity want to know if it's popular. And we're saying, it's pity you know if it's political. But conscious responded and said, we must work on our conscience to do the right thing. The question was responded back from conscious. Is it right to do what we do? It is right to criticize, to have courage when others are afraid because cowardness Ask the question, don't forget, is it safe? And I respond, no, it's not. <laughs> That's my president, y'all. That's Dr. Charles Steele Jr. Uh, congratulations on your work in, all throughout Georgia uh, and talking about the election for years uh, because I think you and others of your ilk made a difference in this special election and what it's going to mean uh, for the United States. This has been SCLC Today TV.